Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Light It Up. I am your host, Dr. Ajina Mashira. So excited about this week's episode because I have three distinguished men. They actually have all been on Light It Up before in season one, I believe, um, of the podcast. But we're going to be, this is kind of like a father and his son's episode, but we are going to be talking about mentorship and their nonprofit organization. But I would like to introduce to everyone, Eugene Muhammad and Eugene Khalil Muhammad and Eugene Jamil Muhammad. So there's going to be a lot of confusion. Um, I'll refer to them by their middle names. And when I'm talking to the dad, I'll refer to him more than likely as Big Gene. But welcome, gentlemen, to Light It Up. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I have had the pleasure of having each of you on the podcast. I I actually had Eugene Khalil and Eugene Jamil on the podcast um, last year. We talked about education because you both work as teachers um, at a middle school in the area. And Eugene, Big Gene, we talked about fatherhood. So um, I think this is really a great opportunity to reintroduce you all to the audience and talk about um, the nonprofit organization that you all have established and talk about kind of, you know, the reason why giving back and empowering youth is so important. Um, so Eugene, I want to start with you because you are, you also work in higher education. You are a professor and uh one uh, little fact that I guess I could share with the audience is that all three of you are uh, Morehouse men. So that's why I said I have three distinguished men um, because everybody talks about those Morehouse men, right? (laughs) So Eugene, why don't we kind of start with you and um, give us a little bit of an introduction um, of who you are and then kind of talk about, um, you know, the influence that you've had on your sons I want to talk about that, and then we can get into the organization. Yeah. Well, my name is Eugene Muhammad, as you've already stated. I'm a product of Southside of Chicago. I attended uh, Whitney Young High School on the west side, and then went down to Atlanta, Georgia, and matriculated at Morehouse College. Um, One of the things that they basically drilled in us at Morehouse was service. Service, service, service. And so... I was a Bonner scholar there actually. And we would do uh, service oriented activities throughout the year. Um, I remember Tech Wood Homes over there on, on Georgia Tech's campus where they tore them down. Uh, I just got back. So I, I just rolled by there and was reminiscing a bit. And so, um, you know, when I came back to Chicago, um, the first thing I had on my mind was how do I give back to the community that had produced me? Um, and so I immediately went to West Pullman Elementary School, started a, a little B4 school algebra program called Rise and Shine. And then I did a boys to men uh, program there as well. And so that was pretty much the start of my uh, giving back. I immediately realized that the best way to give back is, of course, to organize and then leverage resources and galvanize collective resources so that you can um, do some of this work and actually render those wraparound services that all the nonprofits talk about. But it's a collaborative effort that's key, so. Absolutely, okay. So now Eugene, Khalil, you're the oldest, right? Yes. See, okay, I got it now. 
Um, so let's talk about your, um, give us a little bit about your background. I know you are a teacher um, and you too have, you've also worked, served as a mentor and um, done some service work throughout your year. So let's just kind of talk about that just a little bit as an introduction. I just realized the other day, collectively, I've been doing after school and summer school programs in Indiana and some in Atlanta. And I've, I've been in a bunch of schools in Chicago for 10 years, like it's a, exactly 10 years. So I'm proud of that. Um, I believe in many of the nonprofits like uh, ASM, City Year, uh, Academy Group, um, Chicago uh, Youth Authors and, and CYC and all of them. I believe in those th that type of work because they offer services that children can really use to propel them forward. So um, I really believe in that. And, you know, something, something happened last year before COVID, right before COVID. We were, we have a lot of troubled students. We have a lot of trouble making students in and out the dean's office and things like that. Um, even some in my class, you know, they'll act up, you know, be rebellious and things like that. But me and Jamil Muhammad started a Saturday debate program um, right before COVID. We had did uh, two Saturdays right before COVID. And when I tell you that those same problematic students from, from the, the normal day to day, on that Saturday, they were the most well-behaved, uh, engaged students like ever, you know what I mean? So it, that made me realize that some students just need, some kids, you, uh, uh, you know, K through 12, they just need options, you know what I mean? So they weren't excited about anything, but for some reason you would never think that the thing that these kids wanted and needed was a Saturday debate program because they like to talk, right. they like to argue, they like to speak, they, they like the attention. So if you get them a platform where they can do those things and express themselves in that way, um, you know, that can really be beneficial. And who knows what, have, what would have happened if we had been able to continue those Saturdays and build that relationship with those students. It, it probably, we probably would have saw a change in their behavior and productivity throughout the school year, but COVID kind of shut that down. So that just really opened my eyes. Like a lot, we don't, these kids, you know, a lot of times we say, you know, kids should do what they're passionate about. And even kids and adults, sometimes if you're not presented with opportunity, if you don't have the option, then you, you can't really, you know, you, you don't really know what you're into until the, op the option or opportunity is presented. So. Right. Exposure is definitely, definitely key. So Jamil, yeah, Jamil, see, I want to call you by your entire name. <laughs> Jamil, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Well, my name is Jamil Muhammad. I'm the second oldest. Um, so I get all the perks of being a little brother plus being an older sibling as well. Um, I have a similar experience as Eugene. We went to the same high school. We worked a lot of the same programs, almost all of them, uh, after school, summer programs. Um, and this has been an amazing experience working with youth since I was a youth. Um, and of course, while we were at Morehouse College, we took some time out and, and mentored and um, did a couple programs um, at some nearby schools. And um, <laughs> one of the best or the most recent experiences is that mentoring program um, that we had done at the end of this school year around June. Mm -hmm. We did a two week uh, mentoring program at our school with some youth. And um, it, was a, it was a really good experience. We got some really, uh, really good memories though it wasn't um we weren't able to do everything because we, we have a lot to offer so my dream was really to uh, to engage them in, in different things like uh, like giving them more opportunities to learn more sports learning more mannerisms how to conduct themselves and um we're fortunate enough to see those same students throughout this school year so that was a, a added benefit but these are things that we constantly meet and talk about each and every day um, because we actually, he talked about they needed options, but um, one thing, one thing that I noticed is that they need love and love with those options. So not only are we offering the service, but we're offering tools that they can use to um, benefit themselves in the future and now. And um, that has to come from a spirit of love. 
we could stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right. I mean, considering um, everything that uh, our community is faced with, um, so many times I hear parents saying there aren't enough programs out there for to keep our children engaged. They don't have anything to do. Um, but there are programs available. It's just making sure that the exposure is there so that people are aware of those opportunities that exist for their children. Now, your nonprofit organization, Imprana, is more like a, a family affair because there is one other member of the board of directors, right? Yasmin Muhammad. Yasmin Muhammad. Yasmin Muhammad, who couldn't be here with us, but she is a Spelmanite, correct? So you all really keep it in the family there <laughs> with that connection. So why don't you all talk about, um, I understand that the organization really focuses on kind of bringing um, change, you know, within the community by providing quality after school programs and, and summer enrichment programs. Why, what was the motivation? I, and you kind of touched upon it, but what was the motivation to actually establish a nonprofit organization versus just doing, you know, service work without the formalization of a nonprofit? Either I, can, I can jump in real quick. I think that um, we talk about this a lot, that a lot of the changes that we want to make, they rest upon the shoulders of individuals. And I think we want to really institutionalize some of the changes that we want to see. And that's something that requires planning, that requires, again, pooling resources and taking not just even you know, talking about material resources, but all just all types of social capital that we could bring that's intellectual skill, et cetera. And I think that's, that being the focus was the primary motivation was how do we now create a platform from, from which we can do work that focused on Chicago in general, yes, but also on starting with the South Side. I mean, our goal, one of our goals was to make debate and we wanted to come up with something like hip hop debate, some new hip form of debate. Why not make debate kind of a, a household name throughout Chicago in the same way that basketball is, in the same way that, you know, football or baseball may be, I don't know, our baseball teams aren't that good, but definitely hooping. Everybody from Chicago hoops. Well, I want it to be that everybody from Chicago debates and they debate well. But that should be an example of, you know, having the vision of really permeating all of the various sectors throughout Chicago with these programs and activities. And hopefully it'll grow. It'll grow as something that pro probably could be national. Now, when did when did you all um, launch Emprana? July 4th. Oh, oh wow. Well, you all have to, for the audience who does not know the significance of July 4th, particularly to those of us who bear the last name Muhammad, we may need to give you a separate educational lesson on that. <laughs> but that is known as our independence, if you right. are familiar with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All right. I like that. Um, yeah. So, and, and that significance in that, too. We thought we, that was a part of it, yeah. uh, that th this will be the founding date and bringing all the significance that comes along with that, um, of course, with um, our Savior coming here. Mm -hmm. in the hills of North America, right? Absolutely. You know what I can appreciate, what I can say right now that I appreciate about having you all on is, you know, when you think about our Black men and our community and just thinking about, you know, the relationship between fathers and sons, for example, I know I've seen you guys interacted with you all. So I know you all really do sit down and have conversations, you know, but to put work behind the talk, 
you know? So it's not as if you're just sitting around having conversations and there isn't any productivity and there isn't any action. And I think that's really, really important because our young men and women, they need leadership and guidance from our men. So I just want to kind of, you know, pause and digress to say thank you for being an example and building something with your sons and your daughters. All praises, all praises due to Allah. I think, you know, um, one of the things that really pressed us, and I, I share this with my, my sons, that, man, what do you want to leave when you, you know, when you leave this planet, when you leave this life? What legacy do you want to leave? And do you have a vision that will impact our loved ones, our community members after we're gone? And for me, you know, I'm at a later stage of my life. I think about that. I think about how people will, re will remember me. You know, the lives I've touched as a teacher, a program, you know, coordinator or instructor in the program. I really think about that. And for me, that's a, a great goal of life. A lot of people talk about, you know, gaining material wealth, you know, career advancement. Well, what about touching the lives of people and blessing them where you find them? Right. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit more about the um, the debate, you know, program that you all established and the benefits that the youth receive from participating in, in that program? And I'm curious to know, did you guys have um, any young men? Because I, I, you know, I really, one of the things that I tell my son is that whenever you're talking to somebody, you need to make sure you articulate, enunciate your words and look them in the eye. And I'm sure that you probably, you know, when you're training the youth on the proper way to debate, I'm sure there are conversations and discussions about that as well. But, you know, can you talk about the experiences of the youth participating in that aspect of your programs? I think that one of the reasons why we really are passionate about debate and public speech and things like that is we understand the importance of critical thinking, right? So debate is fun. It's a way of getting out aggression. So a lot of these students who act out like I talked about in the classroom, mm -hmm. they want to, it's like, it's like they, um, they, they want to get some aggression out, the boys and the girls. They want to challenge, you know, they want to be challenged and that can be a healthy outlet, you know what I mean? Um, one of the definitions of debate is, is, is it's a catalyst to the truth. So that's another reason why we like debate. Debate can lead to truth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that, and I'm pretty sure that my father and my brother, you know, believe in this as well, is that there's so much information and ideolo ideologies being thrown at our youth that they need something to combat that, or at least they need something to assess the information that is being presented to them, that the, the, the ideas that are being sold to them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they should be able to, you know, uh, do those drugs. Uh, they should be able to come up with a healthy reason or at least pull out their phone and look up, you know, why is this bad for me? Or why is this good for me? Or why I should not do that? Like something as simple as that, just critical thinking. And um, another thing is, uh, I, I remember I was in high school. We were all sitting around talking about smoking weed. And this guy, one of my one of my friends, we call him Hands. He was like, he's like, yeah, man, you know, I smoke weed because you know, Kanye smoke weed. And I was just like, we, me, me and some of my friends just sitting there like, wow, that is some bogus reason. That is terrible reasoning. They should be able to come up with reasons better than that. even. Yeah, I was at I was at Morehouse in a class. This guy was really committed to uh, marijuana, and he said, marijuana is going to cure cancer. And I and I reached back and I said, uh, so why hasn't it? <laughs> like, explain <laughs> to us, like, qualify that, like, back that up. They are our, our youth. They should be able to say, can uh, they, should, they should be able to say things like, uh, can you back that up? You know, where's the source? They should know how to look for sources. They should know how to look at data. You know, people skew data all the time. They should know how to. They should know how to find the uh, the legitimate. Uh, claims that people are making. They should learn how to legitimize claims. They should know how to, uh, you know, sift out BS. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They should be able to come to their own truths and things like that through that, you know? So a debate program can do that. It can teach them the rudiments of reasoning, the rudiments of uh, logic and those kinds of things. So I think we, we sit around and debate all day long. Our newest debate is uh, we're talking about uh, calories. <laughs> we've been talking about calories and working out. So mm-hmm. we've been having a lot of debate around that. So, okay. Now, J- Jamil, um, there are some other aspects to the programs that you all offer um, as well, besides the debate and forensics piece. What are some other programming that you all have available for youth? Well, having the experience, um, pretty much we all have martial arts background. So um, we're definitely going to have some um, some programs coming soon to engage the physical fitness aspect. Um, but we did, of course, we had, we had the mentoring program as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's specifically catered toward developing the, young, the minds of the young boys, um, teaching them how to present yourself in public and uh, even even private spaces, you should still carry yourself a certain way. And um, there are things that you should know how to do. Like um, we believe that you should be able to carry your own body or at least be able to move it. Um, and that ultimately develops your mind and the way that you think in your, in your classroom performance as well. So um, that's one thing that we are really looking to expand as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we have the debate program. And uh, I did want to chime in and add one thing to that. One thing that I really enjoy observing is when students or the young people, they just, they really surprise themselves when they're in that, that situation where they have to think quickly. Like we have one um, activity called hot seat. You have to think quickly on your feet, mm-hmm. but they surprise themselves and they often come with some pretty fascinating ideas or things just because they were in that situation. And of course, since it's a safe space, they they can develop a lot quicker, and that's something that we we noticed. Um, but that, yeah, those are those are two that we've been working on so far. We had the mentoring and uh, debate. Okay. Some of the things that we focused on in the mentoring program mm-hmm. were, like, was nutrition, um, health, uh, journaling, so SEL, social emotional learning. We focused on uh, you know our physical bodies, and we focused on STEM, so science. Okay. So we had them do a bunch of those type of activities as well. Now, do you all partner with any other organizations or with schools or other community groups as well, as far as you know, pulling together programming? Yeah, we actually, well, just real quick, the YWCA, we just did hip hop and philosophy, we just finished um, our hip hop and philosophy program. Uh, with the YWCA and it was a summer virtual program and we got a chance to go through the history of hip hop and connect it to some thinkers. You know, we had these young people reflecting on uh, Plato's Republic and Allegory of the Cave and Socrates as the exemplar of the Socratic method and philosophy in general. And so I was really shocked at, at the capacity of our young people to reflect deeply um, I'm going to be honest with you, as progressive as I might be in my thinking, I don't think I gave them enough credit because those kids, I was reading their essays and I was just blown away at the reflection. So the capacity is there. We just don't have the opportunities that was mentioned earlier about options. We don't have options that would facilitate that and then nurture those skills. And that's an area we want to kind of to fulfill that need. Gene, I'm sorry, go ahead, you were. Um, I don't think I, I'm, I would just, I just wanted him to mention the fact that we did uh, SEL and STEM. I think that social emotional learning, um, I think that ties into better mental health. Mm-hmm. Like children deal with that, you know, that's a big thing that we ignore. Right. So that's all I was trying to add about the, with the mentoring program. We did yeah. that with uh, ECUEA. Yeah. Okay. East Chicago Urban Enterprise Academy in Indiana. We okay. partnered with them. We did a fourth through fifth grade boys. Um, we they they told us that that's what they needed. 
So we were able to build some really good relationships. Uh, we had a lot of fun and we were just hanging out, learning, developing uh, for that whole little two weeks. And the kids really appreciated it because there was nothing for them this summer. You know what I mean? So we want to be able to provide, we wanted to be able to provide them with something. So we did what we needed to do and we just made it happen. Came over the curriculum, mm -hmm. things like that. So what age range or, um, yeah, do you all normally work with, with your programs? Are they tailored to students who are middle school and high through high school or um, do you all work with? We work with K through eight. I mean, I'm sorry, K through 12. K through 12. We've worked with K through 12. The debate programs that we, under Impact Beyond, we partnered with After School Matters. Okay. And we did uh, a three, what was it? Was it four or three years? Maybe three. Yeah, About three, three years. Yeah, three. We did um, a debate program with uh, 14 to 17 year olds. Yeah. So, and then our, our other programs, we have a program called Who Got Game, which is recreational. Mm -hmm. We teach kids how to play chess, video gaming, connect for, and just teach them how to win, how to lose. We've done that. That was huge. That was uh, K through eight, right? And we did martial arts K through eight. And I'm going to let uh, Mr. Muhammad. I mean, <laughs> which, which Mr. So Muhammad? There are three of you. <laughs> uh, Big Jane Muhammad. For the, with the martial arts piece, yeah, that's another piece that we think that young people, young people should have avenues to express themselves mm -hmm. um, aggressively, um, but also to uh, develop healthy methods of meditation that help with health and good health and being in good physical shape, and also having confidence in yourself. And those are things that we know, I mean, it's been shown across the board. Most articles or research on martial arts, we know that that's one, if not the primary outcomes, definitely secondary outcomes that we get from the martial arts in addition to how to kick, but how to kick bad habits, right? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I, I uh, just thought about when I was uh, younger, I took martial arts um didn't last for long but as you a, a oh, was you was you, a, was you a ninja <laughs> you got these little stars at people uh-huh <laughs> but as i when i got older i um i took uh a, a keto yeah. um so, but I know there's the discipline that's involved with martial arts is second to none. And certainly something that we should probably all try to get involved in because you, you before you act or react, you know, you're going to think multiple times before you, you know, choose to, to react. So, um, the discipline and definitely is something. Confidence in your capacity. You know, people who know how to fight are less likely to fight. Exactly. Understand the seriousness of physical confrontations. Mm -hmm. um, and they're less threatened. Um, right. I've been in a variety of situations and I don't easily threat. However, I'm very good at assessing threats, but I'm not, you know, I don't overreact. I don't have to go get a gun and shoot somebody because I'm scared. Um, and I think that's very important given the current state of our communities where you have so much gunplay, which comes from a mismanagement of emotions. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how can people get involved if they, or get their children involved in your program? Where can they where can they find you or get more information? We have on our website we have a, um, a direct link at the bottom. Um, you can what's, email. What's your website? The website is emprana.org. E m p r a n a dot org. Um, we have, of course, we have our programs, uh, what we're about, our mission, mm -hmm. and we also have um, a direct link so that you can contact um, us at any time. We'll respond. Okay. And because of COVID, we we don't have a problem really uh, custom fitting programs 
Um, sometimes we we will construct and build a program around a need. Somebody like, look, we need, I don't know, we need some break dancers who can who also know how to throw them stars that Sister Jean was throwing when she was a kid. Uh, we could do a program for that. We could do a program of break dancing ninjas. Absolutely. <laughs> now, here's something that's very important. Don't tell I, me you were a break dancer too. And come on now, that's just too much. And you was a ninja and a break dancer. Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> no, seriously. But what if what if organizations or corporations or individuals want to support your efforts? Are you all looking for any type of um or you know ways in which others can actually support your efforts? Absolutely. Um, we definitely will um are welcome to and receptive of any kind of uh, material and even just more support. If you want to just send us a little message saying, hey, you, you all are doing a great job. Please send us a message so we can use that. Um, often we go after grants, you know, sometimes they want to see those kind of response. So please feel free to contact us. Again, if you got money, please uh, contact us. Um, and what, what we like to do with our model, um, we definitely like to find a way of leveraging dollars in such a way where it goes right directly to programming. We don't have a lot of administrative expenses. Um, and so really dollars like dollar for dollar goes directly to direct instruction, direct contact with our constituents and with our program participants. So I think that's very important. Of course, we have the luxury of that because we're small. Mm -hmm. But as we grow, you know, you start having more administrative uh, expenses and responsibilities that might change. But for now, we could say that um, your dollars will go directly to helping us um, do this work. Okay. Now, here's one thing that I like to know. I mean, obviously, if you've had the vision to create this organization and to develop these programs for um, youth, I'm sure that you all have thought about where you see yourself as see yourselves as an organization in the next five to 10 years. So I'm posing the question, what, are, what where do you see in Prana in the next five years? What are your goals? Well, we're gonna drop that in Prana mixtape this summer. <laughs> and then that's it. from there, as we just said, it's gonna be over. <laughs> I'll let you all respond, seriously. <laughs> I, I see myself as, as running in Prana full time. Okay. Well, we're all board members, of course. Mm -hmm. So I, I see myself, you know, well into running it full time um, with the help of my father, my brother, and anyone else we bring along the journey. Mm -hmm. um, just providing services around needs. Um, I think that that's, that that's key. And that could be anything. That could be business finance. I'm an MBA. So I we want to get into that. Yeah. I'm in the NBA. Jamil Muhammad uh, is a science major. Uh, bi he's a biology major. What's your master's in? Biotech with biotech management. Right. And then we got uh, Big Gene Muhammad, who uh, has a degree in everything. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that so we expect to use our to leverage our education as well. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, in our experience to build services um, around need for you. All right. So uh, I'm going to let Jamil take it from there. I also see myself in the next five to 10 years uh, working and, and serving through Imprana. Um, and, and of course, the south side of Chicago, but also other parts of Chicago. And um, potentially, I did want to, I want us to eventually branch out, um, mm -hmm. especially working programs that engage the mind, body, and soul um, in various ways and fill those needs that are catered toward the individuals that want the programs. Um, so really getting a really, really good flow and becoming well-established on the south side of Chicago first and then branching off from there. Okay. Well, I expect us to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I expect us to have research, numbers to back the effectiveness um, of our programs, um, uh, be able to show proven outcomes. You know, we're still building out the foundation. So mm -hmm. I expect the foundation to be fully built out by the end of this year, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's our goal. So we're still working. You know what I mean? It's a lot of, it's, it's crazy because I didn't know how much work 
mm -hmm. was a nonprofit specifically. And, so yeah. started, yeah. and, I, and I, would, I would like to teach some of these youth out here who want to start their own 501c3s, you know, how to do that, you know what I mean? And what's to, what's to be expected in that thing. So I expect us to, all right, so this is my overarching goal. I expect us, I expect us to be well-known. Mm -hmm. I expect us to be in almost every school on the South side of Chicago first. Mm -hmm. I expect us to be a number one contact. I expect us to be as ubiquitous, uh, in terms of people's minds when they when they're thinking about writing those grants or donating money um for uh, like companies like after school matters or like uh, uh city year and things like that so i expect us to be doing a lot more i expect us to expand you know what i mean so i'm pretty and we all expect that you know we expect to grow right okay um one thing that i i should have asked the beginning of this uh interview and i didn't ask Imprana, how did you all come up with the name? I know it's impassion, empathy, empowerment, and you all are institutionalizing transform transformative change. But how did you all come up with the name? I, well, um, it's a combination of our first initial, the E and the M, and then prana. Prana is from the Vedic or Hindu traditions, and it means the breath of life. And so we really want, it's, it's parallel to chi. Um, if you want to go to, you know, some of the more Eastern Asian uh, traditions, chi or ki. But um, we want to be that catalyst that brings the breath of life, that life energy back to our communities that are in need. And so that is in prana and we, we, all those terms, you just empower, like you see my head, like empowerment is a, is a central and core value of ours. Mm -hmm. We want to empower young people, young women, young boys, uh, people who are marginalized. We want to be that go-to. So yes, in the next five, 10 years, I would love for people when they're thinking about who can we reach out to to do this work they'll think wow in prana and prana all day all right and you know there's also the breath of life by the honorable the Muhammad. Yeah. all right they all like connection then that's right. that's right. what those lessons brother <laughs> that's right <laughs> right good stuff good stuff <laughs> So um, tell the people once again, how they can, where they can find you, um, your, your website. Um, and again, if they want to get their youth involved or if they want to reach out to provide any type of monetary or moral uh, support, um, how can they reach you all? Go ahead, Jamil. Give it to them one more time. <laughs> You can reach us um, via our contact information from our website, mprana.org. That's E-M-P-R-A-N-A.org. We have an email address or phone number. You can reach us by. We will respond very, very quickly. Awesome. You can text well, that number directly. Okay. As well. Yes, sir. All right. Well, you know, I always put you all on the spot. Um, you know, you have an open invitation to join me on Light It Up. If there are any programs that you all, or especially events that you all have coming up, you know, in the future, pick up the phone, let me know, and come back and join me once again on Light It Up, where we aim to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. So thank you so much uh, for joining me for this week's episode and uh, for those of you in the viewing audience if you enjoyed this episode make sure you share the information with someone else share the podcast with your family and friends make sure you support these three men um, and the entire uh, board of directors of Imprana because they are doing excellent work in our community and um, we need to make sure that we support those individuals who are working diligently to support and to 
transform our communities as well. So until next week, I want you all to continue to light it up and shine bright like a diamond. Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.